So let's set up double integral for the volume between z equals 6 and z equals x plus 1 over the region bounded by x equal y squared and y equal x minus 2. So first of all, let's try to draw this region of the xy plane. And we could start by graphing x equal y squared. So one way to do this is uh, just to make a table of values. If x equals 0, y would have to be 0 to satisfy that equation. If x equal 1, there could be a couple of possibilities for the y value. It could be either plus or minus 1. Um, and then if we think about some other nice numbers to plug in, you could try something like x equal 4, and that would lead to two possible y values. y could be plus or minus 2. So let's see if we can graph these points. So we'll just label the axes and put some scale on here. So some of the points, we've got 0, 0. When x is equal to 1, y could be either plus or minus 1. And then when x is equal to 4, y could be plus or minus 2. So what we've got here is actually a parabola that's opening in the positive x direction. And I'll just label that for future reference. And then let's see if we can plot that line y equal x minus 2. So that's got a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of 1. So as we move uh, one unit to the right, y value is just going to keep increasing. And by the time we get to x equal 4, we'll be up at y equal 2. So we'll label that red line as y equal x minus 2. Um, and so we can see that the region R that we're talking about is this region that's enclosed by the parabola and the line. So I would say for this region here, horizontal slices are going to be our best bet. Because if we imagine drawing a series of horizontal lines here, every horizontal line through that region is going to be hitting the parabola in black at the left, and it's going to be hitting the red line at the right. And so that will be true for every single horizontal slice throughout that region. Incidentally, vertical slices would not work very well here because towards the left of the diagram, or towards the left of the region, vertical slice would be hitting the parabola at the top and the bottom, but then further over on the right, it would be hitting the parabola at the top and the red line at the bottom. That's bad news because that means vertical slices would really require us breaking this region up into two separate subregions and dealing with two different integrals. So I would say horizontal slices would be the best way to approach this. So if we're going to do horizontal slices, then we want to think about our x values first and then our y values after that. Um, so we need to make sure that we understand what the x values look like for both of these two curves that are forming uh, the boundary of this region. So the parabola we already know has equation x equal y squared. And the line, uh, well, its equation was given in terms of y, but we could rearrange this to solve for x. We could say uh, y plus 2 is equal to x, or even just write that the other way around and say x equals y plus 2. That's just another way of saying the equation of that line. So with that, we should be able to set up the limits for our integration. So as we uh, draw a horizontal slice here, we move across this region from left to right. The x value at the left is given by the parabola, where x equal y squared. So we're going to use the y squared value. And uh, as we move over to the right, we're hitting the red line, where x is equal to y plus 2. So we're going to say all the x values in that region are ranging from y squared to y plus 2. And then as we um, just scan over that region from top to bottom, or sorry, from bottom to top rather, from bottom to top, uh, the y values we're running through will be from negative 1 to 2. So we're almost ready to set up our double integral. There's only one other matter we need to deal with, um, and that is thinking about our two surfaces. So remember what we're doing here is finding the volume between two surfaces. And the two surfaces have equation z equals 6 and z equals x plus 1. So I just want to take a minute and think about these two quantities, the 6 versus the x plus 1. We need to figure out which of these two quantities is bigger over the region that we're interested in, because that's going to tell us which surface is um, higher versus which one's lower. 
Okay, so let's take a quick look at our region again. Um, all the x values that you see in this picture are somewhere between 0 and 4. So that tells us that the biggest that x plus 1 is ever going to get, biggest it could possibly be, is 5. So 6 is definitely going to be the bigger of the two numbers. Or you could call that z top if you wanted just to emphasize that it's the higher of the two surfaces. And then you could call this one z bottom if you wanted to do it that way. Okay, so then the volume between these two surfaces, we're going to do the double integral over our region R. We're going to do z top minus z bottom. And we're just going to multiply that by dA. Um, since we're doing horizontal slices in this problem, dA will be dx dy. So just to give you a bit of a visual on this z top, z bottom for this particular problem, um, if we were to graph z equals 6, that would be a horizontal plane. So let's just say z equals 6 is up there. There's our z equals 6. Um, and then if we wanted to visualize the other surface, z equal x plus 1. So that would look something like this. z values would be increasing as x is increasing. So let's say the surface uh, z equal x plus 1 looks something like this plane here. And then we've got some region r in the xy plane, which just I'm just going to draw that sort of generically here. As, let's just say this is our region r, just for the sake of a representative picture. And so we're looking over all the points x, y that lie over that region R. Um, and we're trying to capture all the points that are lying between the upper surface and the lower surface. So the z equals 6 being the upper surface and the z equal x plus 1 being the lower surface. So that's why we had to do this um, sort of detour here and think about which surface was z top, which surface was z bottom. So with all that out of the way, I think we're good to go. We'll do this over a couple of steps. Um, so first, let's think about the integrand here. We're going z top, which is 6, and subtracting off z bottom. So we need to subtract off x and subtract off another 1. We could simplify, simplify that and just call that 5 minus x. And since we decided to use horizontal slices for our region, we'll be writing dx dy and we can fill in our limits of integration in the next step. We've got all, the, got all the information on the x and y values right at the top of the screen. So here's our final answer coming up. Integrand 5 minus x. Differentials should be written in the order dx dy. So we know we've got our x values on the inner integral. We said our x values were going from y squared to y plus 2. And we said that our y values were going from negative 1 to 2. So there we have a double integral representing the volume between those two surfaces. Let's set up a double integral for the first octant volume under the plane x plus 2y plus 4z equal 8. So remember when we say first octant, that just means the portion of space where x, y, and z are all positive, and that's going to be helpful to us when we draw our sketch. So let's start off by just sketching this plane. Let's think about our, our intercepts. So we could get our x-intercept just by setting y and z equal to 0. That would force x to equal 8. And in a similar way, we could figure out that our y-intercept would be 4, and our z-intercept would be 2. So I'll just label those on our x, y, and z axes. And then we can figure out what our plane looks like just by drawing uh, a triangle that passes through those three intercepts that we found. So that gives us a sense of how our plane is tilting through space. So in order to set up a double integral for the volume, we need to have an understanding of the region R in the xy plane that we're going to be integrating over. So I'm just shading in that region R so that we can visualize that in this picture. Um, and we're going to actually focus in on this just by redrawing this in the xy plane. So let's zoom in on our region R, just talking about the xy plane now. Um, we know that our x-intercept is 8. 
So let's graph that. We'll just go up in increments of 2 here. So x-intercept of 8 and y-intercept of 4. Um, so when we go into the xy plane, the triangle, the red triangle that we see at the top of the picture here is going to be oriented slightly differently now. Um, it looks like that when we put it in the xy plane. So vertical slices will work just fine for describing this region R. But in order to do that, we would need to find the equation of this line that's forming the top boundary of the region R. So to do that, let's go back to our good old y equal mx plus b um, and just figure out our slope and our intercept to get the equation of that line. So the y-intercept is 4. Um, we can see that as we look at this line segment here, the rise is negative 4 and the run is 8. So that means that our slope minus 4 over 8, in other words, minus 1 half. So that means the equation of our line minus 1 half x plus 4. Okay, so that's going to be useful when we set up the limits of integration. So that means each of these vertical slices here, if we look at them from bottom to top, they are hitting um, the x-axis, which is the line y equals 0. They're hitting y equals 0 at the bottom, and then they're hitting this line y equal minus 1 half x plus 4 at the top. So that means our y values are going from 0 to minus 1 half x plus 4. Um, and then as we scan across the whole region, x values are going from 0 to 8. So those are the values that describe our region R, um, and we'll use those on our double integral. So let's look back at, a pro at the problem for a second, the statement of the problem, and just remind ourselves um, what we're trying to integrate here. So we want to find the volume under this surface. And we saw in our earlier uh, formulas that whenever we're trying to set up a double integral for volume, our integrand needs to be z. Well, the way that this plane is written, um, it's written x plus 2y plus 4z equal 8. So we don't actually have an explicit formula for z, but it would be easy enough just to rearrange this formula and solve for z. So that's what we're going to do. 4z equals 8 minus x minus 2y, and then we can just divide through by 4 to get our integrand. So z is going to be 2 minus x over 4 minus y over 2. So that's what we'll use as our integrand um, when we set up our double integral for the volume. So we could say, in general, the volume under surface is going to be the double integral over the region. Z is going to be the integrand. And then we'll have our dA, which is either going to be dy dx or dx dy, depending whether you've done vertical or horizontal slices. We decided that Z is equal to 2 minus x over 4 minus y over 2. We've decided that we were going to do uh, vertical slices to describe our region. So that's dy dx. And that means that our y values are going to go on the inside integral, x values on the outside integral. So I've just scrolled up a little bit so that we can see our limits of integration. We have those in the red box at the top of the screen. So we set our y values. We're going to go from 0 to, let's say, minus x over 2 plus 4, x values going from 0 to 8. And there we have a double integral that represents the volume under that surface.